Your time right now is 529. Here's what we're working on for this half hour of Wake Up Alabama for you. The search is underway in Brent for a person police believe shot a man in the head. We have the latest details as police continue that, continue that search. Plus, 20 years after a man is killed, someone is finally put behind bars for the crime. We have more on the cold case that's now turned into a homicide investigation. And just a week after being attacked in the water by a shark, a pro surfer grabs his board and dives right in again. That story is coming up. Wow, more power to him. That mm -hmm. water did look nice and refreshing, and on a day like today, wouldn't that feel good? Absolutely. Storm Trap meteorologist Ashley Gann joining us now to look at the forecast. Any place to find a cool off is what you need to do today, right? Absolutely. I'm fond of the air condition. Okay. That's <laughs> my favorite pick. On this Tuesday, we are tracking the heat. Temperatures back in the 90s for your afternoon. Let's start out with a live look now from our Storm Track Tower Cam at the University of Alabama, where temperatures are sitting at 76 at this hour. But look at those dew points in the mid 70s. I expect there could be a few areas of patchy fog, but we're not seeing a whole lot of limited visibility, so it shouldn't have impacts directly for your morning commute. But just be mindful, you could drive through a couple of areas of limited visibility. Temperatures across the board this morning, low to mid 70s. Coleman seeing 71 with Aniston at 73, but from Birmingham to Alabaster and Tuscaloosa, we're seeing a clear sky to start your day. Here's your first forecast. Let's track through your morning. Mid 70s by 7, 90s by noon, mid 90s and a chance of rain for your afternoon. And the rain chances continue to go up as the week goes on. I'll have more coming up in your storm track seven day. Now we'll look at traffic with Gina. All right, Ashley, thank you amazingly, which is fabulous news on this Tuesday morning. No accidents to tell you about. Lots of green out there, which means traffic is moving along smoothly. No major delays. Coming up, we'll take a look at your drive times and how some construction in the area could affect your morning commute. Time right now is 531. We are continuing to follow developing news out of Bibb County for you this morning. A man shot in the head in Brent is now dead. As the story we first reported is breaking news at 6 last night. The search continues this morning for the gunman responsible. We are still working to get a positive ID on the victim. Police tell us the victim was shot in the head around 430 yesterday afternoon near the intersection of University Way and Carter Drive. We do know the victim is a male between the age of 18 and 20. He was airlifted from the scene to UAB Hospital, but he was pronounced dead on arrival there at the hospital. Not real sure of a motive at this time. Uh, officers that are, we've got SBI in here, the State Bureau of Investigation. Uh, every, we're gathering information at this time, uh, trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Police tell us they have a person of interest in this case they're looking for, but as of this morning, they're not releasing that person's name. Chief Nichols is also not identifying the person of interest as a suspect, but he did tell us the person they're looking for should be considered armed and dangerous. Now, Bibb County authorities are looking for a 2008 GMC Yukon 4x4 Denali with the license plate 7AB8355. We're going to continue to follow these developments for you throughout the morning. Be sure to follow us online at WIAT.com and through the WIAT mobile app for real-time updates. A case finally sees an arrest decades after going cold. A Birmingham woman landed in handcuffs in connection with a case that dates back to 1995. Birmingham police tell us 40-year-old Tricia Abney is now charged with capital murder in connection with the death of Justin Barnett. The arrest is 20 years in the making. Police are now investigating the case as a homicide. Investigators believe Barnett was killed at an apartment on Sunrise Lane. Abney is currently being held in the Jefferson County Jail without bond. Happening today, a man arrested and charged for allegedly shooting at Hoover police officers working a traffic stop is scheduled to appear in court this morning. Hoover police say 41-year-old Martin Wood of Montevallo is facing three counts of attempted murder in connection with that shooting. Captain Greg Rector says two officers were standing outside a stopped vehicle on Highway 31 when a person driving through the intersection fired five shots at them. The good news, no one was injured, but police stopped Wood and made the arrest shortly after. Also today, a Coleman man has called a meeting to discuss restoring a Confederate-related holiday. Ron Stone is calling for this public meeting. Coleman County commissioners have also been invited to field questions. The meeting will cover possibly bringing back the Confederate Memorial holiday to the county. 
That meeting is tonight at 7 p.m. at the Vinemont Fire Department. As the debate over the Vestavia Hills mascot continues, we spoke with the man who's been leading the team for nearly four decades. Buddy Anderson has not said much about the ongoing issue that sparked heated school board meetings earlier this month. But at High School Media Days Monday, Anderson says the name is the least of his worries at this point. You know, we're the rebels, you know, and I defer any of that to our superintendent. If you want to call her, you're welcome to call her. But, you know, we're, we're, we're preparing for a football season. That's not the most important thing. Let's the Vestavia Hills School Board recommended earlier this month to keep the rebel name but rebrand the on-field mascot. Two Florida teenagers are still missing this morning, days after their boat capsized during a fishing trip. Friends and family gathered for vigil last night near the small island where the two 14-year-old boys were last seen. Hundreds of people lit the sky with these lanterns, saying it was a way to light the way home for the teens. Their boat was found miles off the coast of Daytona Beach. The U.S. Coast Guard has already searched an area the size of Indiana. Searchers are now focusing offshore near Jacksonville, Florida. Your time now, 535. A repo man gets a surprise when he looks in the back seat of the SUV he just drove off with. Our Lillian Lalo will tell you what he found next. And a pro surfer dies back into the office just a week after being attacked by a shark. And a familiar icon gets a facelift. We'll tell you what's different about this forest dweller. <laughs> You're watching Wake Up Alabama with coverage you can count on. Watching Wake Up Alabama on WIAT CBS 42 News. Well, good Tuesday morning. I'm Storm Track meteorologist Ashley Gann. Check out this beautiful sunrise starting over the Birmingham Metro. We're looking live from our Storm Track tower cam there. Temperatures are sitting at 74 at this hour. It is going to be a bit of a sticky start to the day. And Followed by a steamy afternoon. I want to show off these viewer photos sent in. Denise sent this in yesterday. This is in the south side. She said on the Coosa River. And I tell you what, if you start a day like this, this is a good day. We want to show off your weather photos. Beautiful sunrises, sunsets, or just some midday clouds. Report it at WIAT.com is where you can send your photos. Temperatures this morning starting off in the low to mid 70s. 75 in Alabaster. Talladega is reporting 73. Three, same with Pell City and Aniston. Our coolest spot this morning up in Coleman, they're seeing 71. Although Coleman may be cool this morning, they're under a heat advisory for this afternoon. That means they're 
feels like temperatures return to the 105 to 110 range. But just because most of central Alabama is escaping the heat advisory criteria, that doesn't mean that we won't be impacted by dangerous heat today. So play it safe out there this afternoon. Highs do return to the mid 90s. We could see some rain late this afternoon and you can stay up to date with the latest. All you need to do is download our WIAT 42 weather app and you will have the latest severe weather alerts, live radar and the hourly forecast. Coming up in minutes, I'll have a detailed look at those rain chances in your storm track seven day. Now a look at traffic with Steven. At 539, continued good news this morning as we look at the road still green all throughout the map in the Birmingham metro area. So that means no accidents have been reported as of this time. But again, every 10 minutes we'll update you to let you know what to expect as you head out the door. One story folks will be talking about around the water cooler today involves the accidental repossession of a 10 month old child. It happened in Orlando. The driver of an SUV left his car unlocked and running, and that's how the repo man found it. He snatched up the vehicle and made the startling discovery back at the yard. In the back seat of the car was a sleeping 10 month old child. He says he was shocked to hear what the father said when he came looking for his car. A black gentleman comes running into the parking lot and says, uh, that's my car, that's my car. And I says, you know, oh, hell with the car, is that your baby? And he says, yeah, that's my baby too. And I, you know, well, the police are on their way. And he turned around, jumped in the car and left. Without the baby? Without the baby. Without the baby. The father left the slumbering baby behind. As you just heard, Child Services is now involved. The 2024 Olympics will not be held in the U.S. Boston has withdrawn their bid for the summer games. The city was awaiting an economic impact study to determine if it would be wise to continue to pursue the games. The Olympic Committee wasn't willing to wait, citing the city's mayor as being non-committal. As for the 2022 Winter Games, we should find out on Friday who will host the games. China and Kazakhstan will make their final presentations today. Your time right now is 541. A pro surfing competition ends early after a shark tries to join the contest. Now a week after that scary moment, a happier moment takes place for one of the surfers involved. Plus parents are still on alert after children contract staff after swimming in local lakes. We'll have more on what to look out for. You're watching Wake Up Alabama with coverage you can count on. Terry Nichols, yes, to Brent Police Chief Terry Nichols, and he tells me that they have a suspect in custody this morning. I'll be like, no, we only want to take the you in, Brent. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd that light come from? They have a suspect in custody this morning. No. Originally. The was crazy. Yeah. And originally they only had, I don't know, and originally they only thought there was one victim, a man in his, that in a, somewhere between the ages of 18 and 20 that was shot and
watching Wake Up Alabama on WIAT CBS 42 News. Right now at 544, we are following breaking news. A second body has been found in Brent this morning. This follows yesterday's shooting we've been telling you about all morning long. Melissa Kim is live at the scene this morning, joining us now with the latest information. Melissa? Good morning, guys. Yeah, I just spoke to Brent Police Chief Terry Nichols, and he told me that they have a suspect in custody in this shooting. And on top of that, they have found the body of a second victim. Now, they found that body around 2 2 30 this morning in the vicinity of the that first shooting, uh, which was the which was University Way and Carter Drive. Now, the reason why it took them so long to find the second body or to identify the second body was that they weren't actually sure that there was a second victim, but now they do know that. Now, the first victim was shot in the head, uh, and he was airlifted to UAB Hospital, but he had already died by the time he got there. Now, we can't tell you any of the identities or the names of any of the victims or suspect because, uh, as Chief Nichols told me, they are still investigating and trying to put the pieces of this all together. We will, of course, bring you any more information as soon as we have it. But for now, we're live in Brent this morning. Melissa Kim, WIAT 42 News, coverage you can count on. All right, thank you, Melissa. Last week, fans watched in horror as one of the top surfers in the world was attacked by a shark live on television. But Mick Fanning fought back and made it out of the water alive. Now, just a week later, Fanning is jumping in again in his home waters of Australia. It was a surprising moment for fans and fanning both. Peter Doherty has more from the Gold Coast. The instant Mick hit the water, those on the beach hit their phones. Mick Fanning is at Snapper Rock. The waves weren't big, but the moment was. Surfers were delighted to see the triple world champion enjoying his home break. Not everyone just welcomed him back in the water and we were glad to have him back. The presence of schools of bait fish, often accompanied by feeding sharks, didn't go unnoticed. How ironic though, there are a whole lot of fishing boats out there and bait fish around, so uh, it's certainly gutsy. I wouldn't be doing that straight away, <laughs> that's for sure. Fenning appeared in his element, the atmosphere friendly. From the rocks, Russell Corowis summoned the waves. <laughs> For the O'Connor family from Sydney, seeing the champion was a highlight. McFanning and he was surfing amazing. It was so cool. Oh, I think they're all stoked. And so I think they're happy the first time we've ever surfed at Snapper Rocks. And then uh, to see McFanning out here as well, it's just a dream come true. Yeah, it's brilliant. Over 30 minutes, the Gold Coaster enjoyed a dozen waves. Next stop for Mick Fenning on the World Surfing Tour, the Billabong Pro in Tahiti, beginning August 14. Those who shared the water with him say he's in good spirits. Fantastic. Can't wait to get to Tahiti. Hopefully he'll win. He left a winner today on board a mate's boat who dropped him close to home. A quick jog up the dunes, ending his public comeback surf. Peter Doherty, 7 News. Wow, it's probably weird for him having everybody follow him when he's trying to serve. But it's good to see him back in his element. Y yeah. If you let the fear control the rest of your life, he'll never get back in the water, but he, more power to him. Yeah, he clearly won't be scared. New this morning, the saying is only you can prevent forest fires, but one familiar face is learning you can't stop time. After five decades, Smokey the Bear got a little cosmetic work done. This is Smokey version 2.0. The forest fire prevention icon has greeted Ohio State fairgoers since 1959. Can't believe it's hasn't been that long, Stephen. Hmm. The state's Department of Natural Resources unveiled the new and improved Smokey yesterday. He's 14 feet tall and enhanced with animatronics. Smokey's clothes were freshened up last year. This year, he's taking on a leaner look, and we actually. I think my mic's making noise here. Well, we actually went online to see what the old Smokey looked like. And, uh, he was noticeably larger, he was. a little more rotund, oh, so uh, he must be working out more these days. He must be. I don't think it's my mic, is it? I don't know. All right. But I'll tell you what we're going to do. <laughs> go we're going to go to Storm Track meteorologist Ashley Gann and her microphone and see what she has <laughs> to tell us about today's forecast. Hello, hello. This is this thing on today? Yeah, you know, I think Smokey used to wear a vest. So maybe he's proud of his new physique. And so he lost the vest and he wants to show off his lower calorie diet. So congratulations to Smokey there. Here's what I'm tracking on your Tuesday. We are talking about the heat, but before we get there, let's talk about the beauty of the sky. Kyle Thornton sent this lovely viewer photo in. He said he was vacationing at Lake Gunnersville and just thought, hey, I had to capture this moment. He called it a lion in the sky. We're looking at beautiful blues, yellows, and oranges there, and you can send in your weather photos, whether it's
it's a sunset, a sunrise, a beautiful midday photo. Report it at WIT.com. And you can connect with us online. You can connect with me on Twitter or Facebook as well. So be sure to tweet me those pictures or like my Facebook fan page. And you can send those pictures there as well. Here's what I'm looking at for your Tuesday. That string of 90 degree days continues. There's some activity in the Gulf, but will it impact Alabama? And more rain expected later this week. Will that bring us some much needed relief? Well, we'll see. Today I'm forecasting 94. This will make the 20th day of temperatures at or above 90 degrees for the month of July. On average, we should have 18 days. Well, let me just go ahead and break the news to you. There's three days left in the month of July. I'm forecasting 90 for every single one of them. So that will make 21, 22, 23 days with temperatures at or above 90 for this month. So the heat is on as we round out the month. But I tell you what else is on this morning, the beautiful sunrise. We're looking live from our storm track tower cam in Birmingham, high atop Red Mountain. 74 is the current temperature. Dew points are in the lower 70s, so we will get off to a bit of a sticky start. Temperatures as you walk out the door this morning, warmer west of 65, 76 in Tuscaloosa. 73 is the current now in Clanton. The weather where you live today, feeling the heat in Fayette and Jasper, where they're seeing 95. A mix of sun and clouds for the Birmingham Metro. An isolated shower or storm is possible late in the day. This should clear out by, er by early this evening. 94 for Sylacauga and Alexander City. Coleman's under that heat advisory. That means this feels like temperatures between 105 and 110. And our storm track radar showing a dry scan this morning, but the rain will be developing late in the day. I'll be tracking wet weather Wednesday and Thursday in that per provides us an ounce of relief as we move into the weekend. Highs for your Saturday and Sunday, low 90s with a generous supply of weekend sunshine. And that is a look at your Storm Track 7 day forecast. Here's a look at traffic with Gina. All right, Ashley, thank you. For the most part, the roadways are still looking good this morning. You can see a little bit red there on Highway 31, so traffic is starting to build. We are also seeing stop and go traffic there in Jefferson County, specifically on Parkway East, the southbound lanes, and also, as I mentioned, on US 31 north of town. This is southbound between County Highway 112 and County Highway 118, so just allow yourself some extra time. New time now, 552. The state capitol is getting some major attention, but not for anything you might expect. Yeah, the shocking list Montgomery now tops and why. Plus, a rare find makes its way to the surface 300 years after originally going down with a ship. It's high school football 2015 media days coming up in sports. We're going to show you some of the biggest storylines heading into 2015. Wake up Alabama with coverage you can count on.
watching Wake Up Alabama on WIAT CBS 42 News. It is now five minutes before the top of the hour, and Alabama City is in the national spotlight and not for good reason. According to a recent report, per capita, our state capital, Montgomery, has the most sexually transmitted diseases in the country. Data compiled from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention puts Montgomery at the top of the list for STDs, including chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis. Too often, many STDs are asymptomatic. In other words, you really don't have any symptoms. And one of the best ways to prevent transmission is to pick up a disease before you're symptomatic, as well as before you can spread it, hopefully, to, uh, uh, to someone else. This study also points to strong military presence pushing the rates up in communities. Just like SEC Media Days kickstarts college football, they did the same thing this week with high school football. And one of the more intriguing storylines is going to be Spain Park. They've been the top dog in the region in the last five years. But then Hoover came along, and that 7A region is just downright brutal. Every week's a battle, and Spain Park's going to be right in the middle of it. You got to be consistent with, with what you're putting on the field because you can, you look at our schedule and you can win eight or nine games or you can lose eight or nine. It's every week. So that's the thing that we got to stress is being consistent and to have a chance to win each week. The Jaguars won their region in 2012 and 2013 before Hoover showed up. Those teams play each other October 1st. The winner could be seen as the favorite to win that region. Over at Vestavia Hills, legendary coach Buddy Anderson said he's not retiring anytime soon. And his team's trying to shake off their first real bad season in a very long time, three and seven. So 2015 could be a giant question mark. Does Estavia keep going downhill, or do they get back to those playoff runs they're accustomed to? Some teams can do something better than others, and this team's identity is going. Well, you know, it's still, like I said, it's going to be still to be foreseen because you know, not until we get all those puzzle pieces in in place will we know that. But we're, you know, we're working toward that and. You know, time will, time will tell. Lowell Narcisse does not play football in Alabama right now, but he's about to. The quarterback from Louisiana just committed to Auburn for the class of 2017. He's the number three dual threat QB in the country by 24-7 sports. Actually going to have to sit out his junior year with an ACL injury. Today or yesterday was a milestone for the East Ensley Bengals, their first ever football practice. Coach Vincent Presley teamed up with others around the area to form this new youth football team that now calls McAlpine Park home. It was time for me to bring something home. You know, I've been with other teams helping, and it was like nothing going on in this park, and I didn't want to see my community not have something. So I got with a couple of guys, and we got together, and we brought a team here. And we all did as one, and it's, it's beautiful to see these kids out here and see the people out here. As part of the Magic City Youth Football League, the Bengals will start their season August 29th. And Presley said, unlike some teams, every single kid gets the chance to play. How about that? All right, thank you, Chris. Treasure hunting isn't just a major plot in Nicolas Cage films. It's real. And for one of the crews off the Florida coast, they have made the find of a lifetime. Take a look at these pristine pieces of gold. These are Spanish gold coins recently salvaged from the wreckage of a Spanish treasure ship. Now, the treasure sank along Florida's treasure coast on July 31st, 1715. That is 300 years ago this week. The company announced Monday that it had recovered 60 gold artifacts from the shipwrecks, valued well in excess of $1 million. The centerpiece of the find is a single coin called a royal, made for the King of Spain, Philip V. It's a perfect specimen of the coinage of the period, and is known as a royal because it was destined for the king himself. How cool is that? It's incredible. It's like a kid's dream come true to go looking for a treasure and finding it. Yeah, and all in one spot. For incredible. Them. And worth That's over a million dollars. More power to them. Time now is 5.59. We thank you so much for joining us on this Tuesday morning. Here's a look at what's ahead this half hour on Wake Up Alabama for you. A second body is found and a person is now in police custody this morning. We have an update on breaking news out of Brent overnight. And a store owner refuses to back down when an SUV crashes through his front door. We have the video of what happens next. And later, beware of where you swim. The state isn't testing some of the area's more popular places to cool down. And I know today it's going to be tempting to find a place to cool down. <laughs> That's right. Storm Trap meteorologist Ashley Gann joins us now with a forecast that is becoming quite repetitive. Another day in the 90s in July.
Absolutely. This makes day number 20 for the month of July where we will be feeling the heat and this morning temperatures are well awfully balmy. Let's start out with a look at the skies. This is our storm track tower cam in Old town temperatures this morning sitting at 75 degrees with those dew points at 74. The air temperature and dew point are awfully close, so I would not be surprised if there were a couple of reports of fog early this morning. Not seeing a whole lot out there right now, as you can see by the sky this morning, but there is going to be a bit of a summer haze as we start our Tuesday. Temperatures across the board sitting in the low to mid 70s, and now that that sunshine is beginning to rise, those temperatures are going to start warming up fairly quickly. Alabaster is reporting 74 at this hour with Coleman at 72. I expect temperatures within the next hour or so to be close to 80. We'll be 90 at noon with a good supply of sunshine, but you'll notice those afternoon clouds rolling in. That will actually have a big impact on temperatures. Some folks that see a bit more cloud cover and possibly more rain, those temperatures could be in the lower 90s, and those who see a bit more sunshine, mid 90s. All in all, though, it's a hot Tuesday, but I'll let you know more about the late week rain chances coming up in just a minute in your Storm Track 7 day. Now we'll look at traffic with Stephen. Thank you, Ashley. At 601, the good news continues this morning. We have yet to have an accident reported in the Birmingham metro area. That is fantastic. You can see a little bit of slow travel, though. 31 southbound out of Homewood into Vestavia. But again, no accidents causing that. As of now, we are clear on the roadways at 601. And right now we have some breaking news to tell you about out of Brent. A second body has been found this morning. This follows yesterday's shooting we've been telling you about all morning long. Our Melissa Kim is live in Brent this morning, joining us now with the very latest. Melissa? Yeah, good morning, guys. We have some new information from the Brent Police Department this morning. I just spoke to the Chief Terry Nichols here, and he tells me that they have a suspect in custody as we speak uh, that was respond that they believe is responsible for this shooting. And on top of that, they found a body of a second victim around 2, 2.30 this morning in the vicinity of the original crime. Now, this all started yesterday uh, around 4.30 at University Way and Carter Drive when they found a man shot in the head. He died on the way to UAB Hospital. Now, the reason why they took so long, or they tried, it took them a while to figure out if this second, uh, for the second body, was because they weren't sure if there was a second victim to begin with. But after some investigating, this is what they figured out. Now, Chief Nichols tells me that he can't tell me the name of the suspect or any of the victims yet because they're, they're still trying to piece everything together. And one of the big things that they're trying to figure out right now is what was the motive for this suspect to shoot and kill these two victims. We, of course, have more information coming up later today on Wake Up Alabama, and we, of course, bring you any. New information also on our website, WIAT.com. But for now, we're live in Brent this morning. Melissa Kim, WIAT 42 News coverage you can count on. Thank you, Melissa. Jurisdiction may be the biggest factor in how John Hauser was legally allowed to buy a gun before opening fire in a crowded movie theater last week. A probate judge in Georgia says she did not order Hauser to be involuntarily committed for treatment. She says she lacked jurisdiction in the county where Hauser was hospitalized back in 2008. That means when he filled out his ATF form asking whether a court had ordered him to a mental health facility, he would have answered no correctly. Judge Betty Kaysen says she only signed an order permitting deputies to detain him and take him in for evaluation. She says her role ended there. The two women who police say Hauser killed with the gun he purchased were laid to rest Monday. We told you last week that Governor Robert Bentley wanted members of the Alabama National Guard to be armed and protected. Well, this morning, that want is now policy. This includes arming National Guard members involved in state active duty, as well as stationing armed National Guard members at recruiting locations. Bentley says specific details of the plan are classified and that he won't be releasing further information. The announcement follows an attack on recruiting stations in Chattanooga two weeks ago. A store owner will not be charged after being caught on camera firing multiple shots at men attempting to break into his store. Take a look at this video. It looks like something out of a Hollywood movie. It's in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. An SUV backed into the entryway, not once, but twice. And you can see sparks flying as one of the men tries to push through the ruined door. Those sparks are from bullets smashing into the iron gate. Now, another angle you're going to see here shows the store owner with a gun just blasting away. This was pretty clearly a person exercising both his right to self-defense and implementing the new Castle Doctrine, which says you don't have to let people break into your business. 
I did what I had to do to protect myself and my business and my employees. Good grief. Now, only one of the three men trying to break in has been arrested. New this morning, the Heflin Police Department reports overnight that they have recovered a stolen tractor trailer. Chief A.J. Benefield says the truck was stolen out of Pell City. Its trailer was stolen in Heflin. Also stopped yesterday, a vehicle with a hidden compartment. Inside police tell us they found roughly $24,000 worth of drugs. Your time now, 6.05. Android users, listen up. There's a serious flaw in millions of phones. And it could give hackers access to your personal information. Plus, the search for an 8-year-old girl ends with the arrest of a 15-year-old boy. I'll tell you what happened overnight in the case. And credit theft is nothing new, but it turns out a family-friendly place right here in Birmingham has now fallen victim to hackers. Could it impact you? We'll let you know. You're watching Wake Up Alabama, a gorgeous shot of the sunrise this Tuesday morning. More coverage you can count on after the break. Watching Wake Up Alabama on WIAT CBS 42 News. Well, good Tuesday morning. I'm Storm Track meteorologist Ashley Gann. Check out this fabulous sunrise this morning. We're looking live from our Storm Track Tower cam in Birmingham. Temperature is currently sitting at 74. We're looking high atop Red Mountain here. And dew points are in the low to mid 70s. So there is a bit of a summer haze in the sky. 70 woman in Coleman, although. Coleman County is under a heat advisory for the afternoon. That means heat index values will range between 105 and 110. But just because central Alabama is not highlighted under the heat advisory does not mean that we will have feels like temperatures in the low 100s. It just means we're not meeting the criteria for that heat advisory. So I urge everyone to use caution today. No rain this morning, but we could see a few afternoon showers. That will help to give us a bit of a break in the heat. 70s by 7 a.m., 90s by noon, and mid-90s late in the afternoon. We'll continue monitoring the developing rain situation, isolated thunderstorms, but rain chances will be improving as the week rolls on. And remember, you can always stay up to date with the latest weather 24 hours a day. All you need to do is download the WIAT 42 weather app, and I'll have more on your late week rain chances in minutes. Now look at traffic with Gina. All right, Ashley, thank you. Looking, uh, taking a look at the roadways for you this morning, we do see traffic building there along Highway 31. That red that you see shows that your delay is going to be kind of significant. Nothing major, though, but just give yourself some extra time. We're also seeing some stop-and-go traffic in Townley. That's on Highway 69. 
Well, we have some heartbreaking news out of California for you this morning. The two day search for a missing eight year old girl appears to be over and the end is not good. Breaking overnight, police in Santa Cruz, California, say they believe they found the body of Madison Middleton. Police say a body was found Monday night inside a trash bin at a complex in the city. Middleton vanished Sunday afternoon from an artist community and housing center in a Northern California beach town where she lives with her mother. A 15 year old neighbor is being detained and questioned. North Korea will not follow Iran's example in reducing its nuclear program. The North Korean prime minister to China told members of the press this morning that North Korea is different to Iran because North Korea is, quote, a nuclear weapons state both in name and in reality. International talks calling for disarmament have stalled since 2009. Your time now, 611. A recent trip to the zoo may have cost you more than just the price of admission. Coming up, we'll explain what we uncovered while looking into reports of credit card fraud. But first, baby sea turtles get a real shot at survival. Thanks to the help of the U.S. Coast Guard, we'll explain what they're doing to help the species survive. Adorable. You're watching <laughs> Wake Up Alabama, a live look from our Tuscaloosa camera there. More coverage you can count on after the break. Watching Wake Up Alabama on WIAT CBS 42 News. It's time now 614. If you visited the Birmingham Zoo gift shop this summer or the spring, there's a good chance your credit card information has been compromised. We learned about the breach after talking with police. They tell us that a Hoover couple is now under arrest this morning for allegedly stealing 88 credit card numbers. It really seems like credit card theft is popping up in the news more and more often these days. So we sat down with an identity theft investigator to find out why. She tells us there's no foolproof way to prevent credit card theft, but you can soften the blow. Stop using your debit cards. Stop using your debit cards. And it doesn't matter if you say debit or credit. It's a card that is linked to your income. 
Since credit cards are not linked to your bank account, you're technically not losing any money if your information is stolen. For a list of companies hacked by credit card thieves in the past two years, just head to our website, WIT.com. Happening today, we're keeping our eyes on Dothan this morning. An announcement is scheduled for 1030. Alabama Blue Cross and Blue Shield and Governor Robert Bentley will participate in this announcement. It will be regarding an initiative to further expand access to primary care physicians and advance quality of care for Alabamians. Another popular swimming spot has received a warning about high E. coli levels. This time it's Buck Creek in Shelby County. The news follows similar findings we first told you about last week in Pell City. Doctors say never get into water with a cut or a bug bite and always wear shoes. It's also important to understand that the state is not required to warn you of contaminants in natural waterways. A spokesperson for the Alabama Department of Environmental Management also tells us that they test public drinking supplies. They test lakes and rivers to make sure the wildlife can survive, but they don't test water to see if it's safe to swim in. They explain that they are not required to do so, and they lack the staff to do so anyway. Now that is leaving it up to volunteer groups like the Cahaba River Keepers to conduct tests on their own. We know how important it is to get real data and to be able to provide that to people so they can make intelligent decisions about their own health. It's a public health issue. You're looking at samples taken last week from Buck Creek. Every dark dot that you see is E. coli. Mira Crawford says that based on these samples, Buck Creek is not a safe place to swim. Well, sometimes nature needs a little help, and that's especially true to preserve sea turtles whose habitats are threatened and the numbers are dwindling. On Monday, 600 adorable baby hatchlings got a head start on survival as marine scientists and the U.S. Coast Guard took the animals miles off the coast of Miami to a seaweed patch. Many of the hatchlings are only a day old and will have to fend for themselves. However, that seaweed patch provides natural food and protection from larger predators. Okay, they're just too cute, right? They there. are, and with 600 of them out there, hopefully we have a good percentage of survival. Yes, wouldn't you like to take one home? I would. Till they grow up. Well, and they'll <laughs> grow up for a while. Over 100 <laughs> years old, some of those puppies. Storm track meteorologist <laughs> Ashley Gann joining us now with a look at the forecast. And man, it'd be great to be hanging out there with the turtles today on a Abs hot July day. Absolutely, and as the kids are saying these days, those turtles were just adorbs. They were, <laughs> so, that's yes. what the kids do say. <laughs> Very much so. Well, we're tracking the heat today, so maybe sitting poolside or finding the AC, not a bad idea. Idea. But even despite the heat, we are seeing some fabulous sunrises across our viewing area. Let's start out with this live look from our Storm Track Tower Cam in Birmingham, where we are seeing a gorgeous start to our Tuesday. Temperatures right now sitting at 74 with those dew points in the lower to mid 70s. Very close to the air temperature, we could see a couple of areas of fog, but visibility for the most part is a okay as you're making those morning commute plans for your Tuesday. Speaking of fabulous sunrises, we would love to show off your weather photos, whether it's a sunrise or a Lake Gunnerville sunset like Kyle Thornton sent in. This is his vacation photo from the weekend. Thank you, Kyle, for sending this in. Email me your photos reported at WIET.com. You can also connect with me on Twitter and on Facebook. You can post your pictures all day long. Just tweet me weather by Ashley WX is a shorthand for that or like my Facebook fan page. Here's what I'm tracking for your Tuesday. The string of 90 degree days continues. There's some activity in the Gulf, but will it be impacted? Central Alabama and more rain late week could prove to cool things off just a touch. But let me mention today I'm forecasting 94 for your high and this will make the 20th day that we've seen temperatures at or above 90 for the month of July. On average, we should see about 18 and just to go ahead. Spoiler alert here. There's three days left in July. I'm forecasting 90 for every single one of them. So doing the math there, that's right. 20 plus 3, 23 days for the month of July where we will be baking in this summertime heat. Starting out this morning, balmy in the low to mid 70s, some warmer temperatures west of 65. 76 now in Tuscaloosa and highs today should return to the mid 90s. We will see a clear and sunny start to the day, but there are some afternoon storms and afternoon clouds possible. Who sees the clouds and who sees the rain will really determine those afternoon highs, though we could see a bit of a range anywhere from about 91 to 96, depending 
on that cloud cover. One thing's for sure, though, heat advisories for North Alabama, including Coleman County, where it will feel more like 105 to 110 today. A dry start this morning, but I am looking at some activity down in the Gulf of Mexico. This little disturbance, though, is not going to develop into a tropical system. It should rain itself out near the coast of Tampa. For us, the only wet weather we'll see today will be impacted and influenced by that daytime heating. Very isolated thunderstorms and showers popping up late day. Those should move south throughout the late afternoon and clear out of here by sunset this evening. And I'll continue monitoring a cold front that will be sweeping across the midsection of the nation. And that could bring us our next opportunity for some showers and storms later this week. And hopefully cooling us off just to touch as we move into the weekend. First weekend of August, plenty of sunshine Saturday and Sunday. And that is a look at your storm track seven day forecast. Now a look at traffic with Stephen. All right, thank you, Ashley. At 621, as we continue to look at the roads for you every 10 minutes, the news is great. We love reporting that. There are no accidents to be reported whatsoever in the Birmingham metro area. Some slow traffic there in 31 southbound between Homewood and Vestavia. But other than that, nothing to be concerned of as you head out the door at 621. Early to bed, early to rise, you know, following these words will make back to school easier for you and your child. Plus, Android, Android users beware. There's a security flaw in millions of phones that could make your device a prime target for hackers. Wake Up Alabama with coverage you can count on continues in a moment.